can you do a tier list and how fun I find the killers are to play? Sure. I can do that. That sounds like a decent bullshit video. And now after convincing him to make a video, I secretly release the video that I had planned to go up alongside with his and ride his wave on the algorithm. Checkmate. Regardless, I'll link his video in the description because chances are it's probably better than what this is going to be. So first off, we are going to be starting with Trapper, and he is going to be going in the sleeper tier. Now, normally, I actually have a decent amount of fun with him, but the reason he's going to be in this tier is because probably more so than any other killer, he is completely screwed by factors that are out of his control. Here are some examples that by themselves can completely ruin your game as Trapper. You get an outdoor map that is extremely wide open and survivors can see you from all the way across the map. You get an indoor map that has no grass and no place to hide your traps. You will go against someone with object of obsession. You go against a team. You go against a player who runs behind you and destroys all your traps. You have terrible RNG with your traps and survivors repeatedly pull themselves out on the first try. And these aren't even all the things that can screw you. The problem with Trapper is regardless of how well you place how intelligent next level your traps are, sometimes survivors are just gonna get hit and just run in a straight line past all of them, and then you can't really do anything. There's just so many factors that can make playing Trapper a nightmare. That being said though, you will have those moments sometimes where you have just the perfect strat, like you, you place two traps in the, the craziest places and people just run into those traps repeatedly and when you have those moments where everything's going great trapper is so fun but that very rarely happens next up is wraith with the recent buffs he's been getting in the next buff that's going to be adding windstorm into his base kit to make him faster he's fun now wraith used to be like the killer when it came to the killer that you would bully before he had no lunge at a cloak unless he took an add-on he could be burned out of his cloak significantly easier. Like back in the day, he was just terrible. But right now, he's great. He's gonna end up on the lower side of fun though, because his most optimal playstyle is to kind of just uncloak, ambush someone, and then cloak back up and either try to ambush them again or go for someone else. You never actually want to get into extended chases with him if you want to play him optimally. And, and doing the cloak uncloak thing and never actually chasing someone isn't the most fun thing. Anyways, next up is Billy. Yeah, no, he's he's literal crack. He is literal crack. Billy is so much fun. Yes, he did get nerfed uh, when they reworked him, but the rework wasn't that bad. If you didn't run Instasaw and you didn't run crack Billy, for the most part you don't really notice the nerfs. The only thing that really bugs me is the fact that he's kind of buggy right now and it feels like really weird to start and stop a chainsaw with him. As well as the fact that, you know, bouncing off the map geometry, running into walls, etc. Regardless, regardless, I'm going into too many details, I don't want this to be an hour long. Billy is fun. Billy is so much fun. Curving is so much fun. Getting long chainsaws from across the map is so much fun. Chainsaw only Billy is still fun. I never used OP add-ons, so I don't care that much about the nerf, and yeah, I this killer's amazing. Alright, next up is going to be Nurse. And Nurse is also a very, very, very fun killer. One, because she's really OP, and OP killers are a lot of fun. And two, yeah, she's just really OP. Being able to literally know that if you're good enough with a killer, you can blink on top of Survivor and down them pretty much every single time your blinks off cooldown is just a good feeling you feel powerful but there's just one issue with this killer you need to be really good with them how this killer works basically is if you're bad with nurse you get zero kills every game if you're average with nurse you get zero kills every game if you're good with nurse you get like zero to one maybe two kills every game and then if you're really good with nurse you just 4k like 200 times in a row there's just no in between like because if you miss two to three blink attacks on someone then you lose all of your pressure so it's like you cannot slip up you cannot start making mistakes or you can go from completely dominating to just lose the game and since i'm not very good 
I usually just end up with a 0k. But I still have fun with this killer, and I'm still enjoying getting better with him. Next up is going to be Huntress. Another really fun killer. Man, so many fun killers. This just makes me happy. Huntress is amazing. Because you can apply so much pressure with your hatchets, and it changes the way that survivors have to loop around you. The game between Survivors and Huntress is just so much fun. I, I enjoy going against Huntress, I enjoy playing Huntress. I'm just really bad with her. Like, I'll miss point blank shots five, six, seven times in a row. And kind of the same thing with Nurse, the only thing really keeping her from being literal crack for me is my inability to aim. But yeah, no, Huntress is super fun. Going for long range shots, doing some sick mind games and then predicting their movement and throwing hatches to like predict where they're going to run. Oh, it's so good. Hey, me from the future. The audio for this part of the video bugged out, so I'm just going to do a very shorthand of this. Basically, Myers is really fun because of the fact, less so his power, but more so he feels so authentic to his movie counterpart. In fact, I'd go as far as to say he's probably the only killer in the game that is an accurate representation of their movie counterpart. The way that he starts out weaker and you're forced to kind of stalk people like Myers does in the beginning of Halloween and then you become more powerful and eventually when you stalk people enough you become someone who can vault things quicker, lunge farther, one shot down and you become the unstoppable force that is Michael Myers. No other licensed killer makes me feel like I'm actually playing the character that they're licensing. Myers does. And even if his power is a bit outdated, I always love loading up as this dude and playing as him. He even has add-ons that just straight up let you pick up the survivor against the entity's will and just stab them in the chest. You don't need Mori offerings and you don't need Devour Hope. He can just kill them. I heard they're going to eventually do a Passover on his add-ons and that would be nice, but I really am scared of them reworking the power and I hope they don't because as it is right now, he just feels fun to play. And at the end of the day, this is a game and that's all that matters. Alright, so next up on the list, Hag. And, uh, she's okay. I mean, it, it's fun. I think Hag is absurdly powerful. Honestly, Hag is almost unbeatable in most games, especially if you're going against four solo players, because you really need coordination to beat her. Uh, teleporting to her traps is fun, and there's a deceptively high skill ceiling to Hag. There's a lot of things you can do with your traps that you don't realize. I watched a couple of advanced guides on how to play hag and I admit there's a lot you can do with her. Here's the problem though, you don't need to know any of it to win pretty much every game with her. Yes, you can put up the perfect body blocking traps and the traps that make it to where they stop you from vaulting and all these other traps, but in reality all you really need to do is just place all of your traps around the three closest generators to each other and then just camp those generators and you'll win. If they run too far away from the gens, just let them go. If not, then keep camping those gens. I mean, sure, there, there might be that occasional game where knowing these extra trap things could make the difference between a kill or not, but you really don't need to know any of it to do well with Hag. And when I realized that, after a couple days, I was like, wow, I, I feel like I'm not hyped for this character anymore. They're, they're still a fun character. And if you push through and try to learn the advanced things with them, by all means, amazing. Next up is Doctor, and he's alright as well. My, probably my favorite thing about Doctor is the fact that you can just, at pretty much any point in time, hold control, and then boom, you just you know where the survivors are. This eliminates one of the least fun things that killers can go against, which is just survivors hiding, and that's a really good feeling. And the fact that you're slowly making survivors go crazy, that's really fun too. That being said though, he's otherwise not a very interesting killer to me. A lot of your chase interactions boil down to just timing the shock correctly. When they try to vault a window, throw a pallet down, and then they're unable to do it. And I'm not saying it's easy to do, but it's, it's not the most interesting gameplay. And... Honestly, even when you're doing it properly, you'll still run into these situations where you're just having to repeatedly shock them as you slowly gain distance on them so they can't throw the pallet down. It's like, it's not the most interesting gameplay for me personally. So that's probably why he's here. 
Anyways, back to killers I find more enjoyable. Uh, Leatherface. Leatherface is hella fun. Especially after these buffs, he's fun and he's good. He's still like a noob destroyer, but now he's like a noob obliterator, like deatomizer. If you are going against uncoordinated survivors with Leatherface, you, you just win. I mean, if they make the slightest mistake, you just win. And even when they're playing really efficiently, if you can loop tiles very tight, which once again isn't that difficult when you get used to it, you're just you're just gonna hit them. They're either gonna have to throw the pallet down or you're gonna hit them. It can almost be a little bit frustrating sometimes how easy it is for a competent leather face to just wipe the floor with most teams, even if they're comprised of deep, pretty dang good players. All in all, he's just a fun guy to run around with and then rev your chainsaw and just hit people at the weirdest angles. Uh, quality character. Next up is Freddy, and this might be a controversial opinion, but even playing as him is honestly sleeper tier for me. Snares are probably one of the most boring things that you can do in the entire game. I, I don't think it's fun at all to place a snare at the right corner of the loop and then loop them in such a way that you hit them at 95% of all pallets. I think that's really boring. I think it's funny because people get so mad in DC. I've never had anyone DC against me more than when I play Freddy. But like, if a character is only fun because other people that you go against are getting irritated, then I don't really count that. He's supposed to be a trickster, but honestly, it's like the only really cool thing about him is using his pallets. I mean, having fake pallets actually makes you a trickster. The problem is that the power is objectively worse and you have to use an add-on for that power to even work. So you literally have to use an add-on to make your power worse, just so it's more fun to use. No, Freddy's just kind of cringe. So next up is Amanda, or I guess the pig if you want to call her that, and uh, she's pretty fun. I really actually enjoy using her lunge, like her extended lunge. I think that is a lot of fun. I think there's a lot of mind games you can do at loops, at pallets, you can fake it. It's really, 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 really strong uh, at a lot of loops and can catch you off guard with how far it actually goes. Also, when the traps don't get taken off your head, the survivors heads immediately it's one of if not the best slowdown power in the entire game here's the problem though her traps are so rng based that you can literally have a game where you put four traps on and they get them all off on the first or second try and then you basically just didn't have traps to begin with or you could go against players that just throw down pallets that is probably the pig's biggest weakness is just throwing down pallets because then you can't mind game the pallets. You just keep, they, if survivors keep throwing them down, it's just like you gotta, you just can't really do anything. And it feels really bad. I don't remember if they're actually gonna be doing a Passover on her add-ons or anything like that or her kit, but I, I really hope they do. Clown is a weird case. At the same time, I feel like it's just Freddy's snares, but, but worse. Because, at least with Freddy's snares, you actually get hits with them. With Clown, you just throw the, the gas bottle at them, and then they just throw the pallet down. So, honestly, if this was a real tier list, he'd be, like, bottom two. But, I really like the aesthetic of just being a fat clown running around and killing people, so he's gonna be at the bottom of that tier. <laughs> Alright, you guys are gonna hate me for this, but Spirit's really fun. I really didn't want to enjoy playing Spirit. Deep down, I wanted to hate playing Spirit, but I don't. Spirit is so much fun to play. You can just, you have map traversal, you can, you can down people at pretty much any loop in the game. You have heavy quotes mind games that let you just obliterate survivors, and you make survivors mad, and you're really good. You have passive phasing, which will actually screw survivors over at loops. Like, you, you just have so much. The only thing that keeps Spirit from being the literal cracked here is the fact that the games kind of start to get boring. Once you win like 10 to 12 in a row, you just kind of get bored. <laughs> and I feel like there's no real level to climb mechanically with Spirit. You just 
get better at listening to people and pinpointing their location. All right, Legion. All right, play. No, all jokes aside, Legion's just, it's, it's a new bait killer. I'll say it, it's a new bait killer. A lot of new players will find Legion fun because it's very easy for them to get hits on people. And when you're newer, a lot of survivors are really bad at looping killers when they're injured because they get nervous. So you'll get a lot of 4Ks early on. You get a lot of blood points. Even when you don't get a single kill, you get a lot of blood points with Legion because of the way his power works. If people group up, you get to hit a lot of people with your power. It feels good. But then you start getting better and you realize that Legion just isn't that interesting of a killer. Pretty much what you do is you get the first hit with Legion, pretty much guaranteed when you're more experienced, and then the rest of the game is just you walking at survivors as an M1 killer. That's boring, dude. I will say there's one thing though that makes Legion really fun to play, and that is the fact that you don't really have to play the game. Let's say you are just doing tome challenges or you're streaming and you really have no interest in playing Dead by Daylight, you can just play Legion and turn your brain off and then still get some downs, maybe a kill. Where with most other killers, I feel like you have to actively engage in the game to get kills. It's the killer you play when you don't want to play Dead by Daylight. All right, now next up is Plague. Plague's hella fun, dude. People always say just don't cleanse against Plague. And I do not think in the past like 30 Plague games I've played, I have lost a single game to a team that hasn't cleansed. Like that's, it's, it's such a bait. Because sometimes you're going to be in situations where you have to cleanse. Like if I'm by the hook and everyone's, you know, broken, it's like you can't get the save unless you cleanse. If I make everyone broken and then I drink from my fountain, then I can just snowball the game and win almost instantly. Plague's really fun. Plague kind of feels like Huntress with less aiming required and with a weird aiming mechanic. And honestly, chases using her power are actually super duper fun. I really enjoy them. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Good killer, fun power, very deceptively strong. Next up is going to be Ghostface. And Ghostface is probably a decently fun killer. Issues with this killer are you, basically even when you expose someone, you're still an M1 killer, which is kind of lame. And if you get a really bad map with, with Ghostface, you get a map that's just really open and everyone can see you, you basically just don't have power. And I know people will say that a lot of the times, but trust me, if like you get a wide open map and they can just see you from halfway across it at any point on the map, it's like you just kind of lose. And it's not really a good feeling at all. Plus his reveal mechanic is really buggy. Sometimes I'll be able to literally walk up to people and stalk them and then they'll die. Other times I'll be behind a wall and I'll get revealed. It, it just, it's really inconsistent. It's annoying. It's buggy. I don't think it's a terrible killer. I do enjoy playing him every once in a while, but I, I could not play like 10 games of Ghostface back to back. It would just probably kill me. Next up is Demogorgon. Boom, literal crack. Dude, Demogorgon is so much fun. I feel like a monster when I play this guy. I'm just, I, I just play him like an animal. I just constantly go for lunge hits. You can constantly pressure a lot of locations with your lunges when they're, like if you can pluck them off and go away for pallets, you can bait them into thinking you're going for a lunge and then have won them. Sometimes you can just actually go for the lunge and they'll assume you're baiting them and then you'll just get a hit on them in the middle of nowhere. It's really good. I love slowly setting up my webway of portals and then basically eventually having this really complex webway of teleportation locations. I like hiding my portals and ambushing people. Demogorgon is just a fun, fun, fun killer. I know not everyone feels this way as about him, but I just, I think he's probably like the most balanced killer in the game overall. He doesn't have anything too OP. He does, he's not completely useless. He always can use his power, powers on pretty much every map. He's just a really solid killer and I enjoy him. Sure, I'd like his stealth to last longer, like a lot longer from when he leaves his, his portals, but otherwise, fantastic. Next up is Oni and Boom, literal crack. Once again, two in a row, baby. Oni is just, he's so fun, dude. The hardest thing about him is just getting that first hit and getting the blood flowing. But once you do, you just, you fly across the map. 
you can as a player play almost every single loop in the game with Oni and get downs at it. It's not guaranteed because survivors can also play it effectively, but still, Oni is just so strong and he's so fun too. Slamming the ground and, and hitting multiple people, doing your crazy lunges and hunting them down, Oni is absolutely correct. Alright, so next up is Deathslinger Sleeper tier. Not even, not even consideration. And you might say, well, he's only Sleeper to go against, and I would honestly disagree with that. Not because of his power, but the way that players play against you, because it's the only way they can. What players will do is they will break line of sight and then run away from you in a straight line when you're playing against survivors. And they'll run to a loop, and the moment they get out of sight, they'll just run past the loop in a straight line. And they will never attempt to loop anything ever, and never give you a chance to even use your power. And then eventually, they'll just get hit. And then when they get hit, they just run in a straight line, and run behind objects and run a straight line. They never try to loop anything, and then you catch up to them, and then you hit them because they have to try to loop something. And while that's happening, three other people are doing gens, and it took you 40 seconds to down someone who was holding W. Like, it's it's pretty weak. I'll say Deathslinger, like, he would be fun if people actually tried to play against you like a regular killer, but no one does that. Because if you do that, and a Deathslinger can aim, you just lose. So it's like, I, I am like, yeah, I'm gonna play Deathslinger, and then I play, and then that happens every single game. And then I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to play the killer, like... What's the point? And I'll be honest, the same thing goes for Pyramid Head. Pretty much the only way you can really play against Pyramid Head is just breaking line of sight and running away. You never want to loop a single tile in the entire game. You just want to run away against him. So his gameplay boils down to just chasing after survivors until they run out of distance and then hitting them and then doing it all over again while everyone else just pushes out gens. I don't blame survivors, you have to play against these killers this way, but it makes them really unfun to play. The only difference between these two and the reasons Pyramid Head is higher is because I feel like his power is just is kind of cooler looking, and being able to hit under walls and stuff is cool, as well as having an alternative way to hook someone via caging them, but otherwise, not really that fun. Now we're down to the final two, and I'm going to be hitting you with the best and most fun in my opinion killer to play. Boom. Blight. Blight is so much fun. Blight is just... I don't know, man. He's amazing. The way he is, he is the definition of what a really strong killer should look like in Dead by Daylight. He is very strong. He almost in no situation is just going to get guaranteed hits on you. And if he is getting a guaranteed hit on you, usually as a survivor, that's your fault. You should have tried looping a different way or, or running to a different area where it'd be harder for him to use his power, usually. So like you as the survivor have to think like four steps ahead on which direction you're going to run away from the killer. I feel like in most situations you can play around his power, but even when you can, the killer always has the advantage, which is how it should be. Like you should always as a survivor have a chance to do something, but the scale should always be tipped in the favor of the killer because they're the killer, right? And I, he straddles that line perfectly in my opinion. And he's so fun to play. Just having that map mobility. Being able to counter people that just hold W and run away from you. He's one of the few killers that can do that very effectively. The only complaint that I have and a lot of other people have, now that his camera is going to be fixed and his hitboxes are going to be fixed too, is that aesthetically he is kind of weak. He looks like an alchemist, but basically what he does is he just injects himself and slams into walls, which is not nearly as cool as how he looks. But from like a gameplay perspective, 10 out of 10. He's amazing and very well done. Last up on the list is Twins. I hate to say it. I will say this, I knew from the beginning that Twins were not the worst character in the game. That they were decent, maybe mid-tier, mid-high tier. And I was right. I was probably the only one in the world that believed that and I was right. Twins are strong, but you just can't play them like a traditional killer. You just, you injure people with Charlotte and then you down them with Victor. Victor is almost impossible to avoid. He can hit you at most areas. Loops are not nearly as safe as you think they are. Experienced Victor players will be to, able to hit you there. And then they'll just slug you and then hit the next injured person. And then you're so good at camping, you can put Victor under the hook. 
and then camp with Charlotte and Victor will let you know if someone's running up for the save. Uh, I wanted these guys to be more than just really good at camping and slugging, but that's that's what this killer is. And if you don't play the killer like this, they're just so terrible. It's just not a fun experience regardless. It, plus of the fact they have so many bugs and glitches. My most popular video is just a game where I had like eight glitches happen to me and I lost the game because of it. I hate to say it, these guys have earned their spot as just the least fun killer, period. But yeah, I mean, this is it. See ya.